three-point problems are a graphical way of forecasting the geometry of planar geological surfaces, particularly in the subsurface. And they're used extensively for trying to forecast the content of boreholes. And this exercise takes you through an example. We're going to try and predict the position at depth of an aquifer based on its known position in three other boreholes. So we're forecasting a fourth borehole. And that's really useful in terms of planning uh, borehole uh, development and putting the money together to fund boreholes. So it's a real world type of example. Well, in completing an exercise like this, I found it useful to use uh, colored pens or crayons because we'll be constructing a number of different types of line on the diagram. So it's useful to use the colors to separate these out. We'll also be using a straight edge, um, and essentially a ruler, so we can divide things up and make measurements. A protractor, just for making a ma really simple measurement to get a, a strike, in fact. And um, a set square, just to help us extrapolate lines away from our structure contours and onto the north arrow on the side of our map. So this is the equipment we'll be using. Let's crack on and have a go. So let's look at the map. We can see that we've got a scale here in meters horizontally and a north arrow. And the topography is shown by these brown contour lines, which are separated by intervals of five meters. There's also an old lake bed which has got this elevation of 110 meters above sea level. Now within this landscape there are three existing boreholes shown by these black circles here and the depth below the surface that these boreholes encounter in an aquifer is labeled. So this borehole here encountered the aquifer 25 meters below the landscape. Here the aquifer was just 10 meters below the landscape and here it was 80 meters below the landscape. So the first thing we need to do now is to convert these depths below the landscape to the aquifer to the elevation of the aquifer above sea level. And we can do this by simply subtracting this depth below the landscape from the elevation of the borehole surface in that landscape. So in this case, we go down 80 meters from 120 so the aquifer is 40 meters above sea level. And we can do the same for the other boreholes. So let's just write those numbers down. Now we need to create the three point triangle, which we'll just do by joining up those three boreholes like this. Now let's calculate the change in elevation of our aquifer along each side of our triangle. So the difference between 85 meters and 100 meters is 15 meters. So there's elevation change of 15 meters in this direction here along this side of our triangle. Let's just write that down like that. And let's do the same now for the other two sides of our triangle. So now we need to divide these sides into regular spacings. And I'm going to use 5 meter spacings because these are the same as in the topographic contours. So pretty clearly then, we're going to have 12 5 meter intervals along here, 3 along here, and 9 along here. So we're going to divide our triangle edges up in those proportions. So that's this side done, there's the next side, and finally we'll do this one here and split it into nine segments, like that. So we need to think about how to join these various points together. So we need to give values to these ticks that we put on the sides. So let's consider this side of our triangle, where the aquifer is 85 meters above sea level here and 100 meters above sea level here. So therefore that's going to be 95 and that's going to be 90. 
So we go 100, 95, 90, 85. So I'll just write those numbers down so we don't get confused. Like that. Now let's just consider uh, the other sides here. So this goes from 40 to 100 metres. So that's going to be 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. So again, let's just write some of those down on here. They're quite close together, so I'll only write some, some of them in. Like that. And finally, just to make sure we don't get confused, let's just do the other side of our triangle, which is going to go 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85. So we'll again just write a few of those in along the side. So there we have our triangle with various elevations above sea level for our aquifer as points along the sides of our triangle. So to get structure contours, we just have to join these up. So we'll join 50 to 50, 60 to 60, 70 to 70, 80 to 80, 90 to 90. And then we can interpolate the other ones, the five meter interval ones in between once we've done that. So let's just draw some of those together. So there's the 90, there's the 80, the 70. So here are the structure contours on our aquifer 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 that we've constructed. Now, for the aquifer to be a planar structure, which it has to be in order to solve the three point problem like this, then these contours should be equally spaced and parallel. And there's a slight flare in these, which represents a drafting error um, as I've constructed the contours. But it's pretty minor, so we'll continue to work with it for now. Let me now interpolate in the five metre intervals between the sets of contours we've drawn already. There we go. So there's a bit of flaring as we go out through these, but it's not too bad. So we can find the elevation of the aquifer above sea level in this borehole here. It's going to be somewhere between 60 and 65 meters. Well, somewhere about there. Let's call it about 61 meters above sea level. So the position of the um, aquifer predicting this borehole is 61 meters above sea level. So I'll just write this down. But that value there is the elevation of the aquifer above sea level. What we want to know is its depth in the borehole. So the borehole is drilled or will be drilled at an elevation of 115 meters because it sits on the 115 topographic contour. So that would put it at a depth of 54 meters down. So minus 54 meters below the surface reporting the value to the aquifer in the same way as it's reported in the other boreholes. Now let's calculate the strike and dip of the top of our aquifer. Well, the strike is going to be the trend of the structure contours relative to north, which we can simply measure as a bearing around here like this. So let's just... Um, project those contours across using a simple set square and a slide. So that is the strike there, which allows to measure with a protractor. So that's a bearing in here around from north of O. For nine. That's the strike. And for the dip, we need to do some trigonometry. So here is our aquifer inclined down from 100 meters above sea level down to 40 in this direction here. And uh, 
that change in elevation occurs over the measured horizontal distance here. So we can set up a simple set of trigonometry. So let's just put the numbers into this. I'm going to use um, the elevation from uh, 95 to 55. When we make the measurement, we'll make the measure, measurement perpendicular to the structure contours. So it's, it's almost that angle there. It's, it's not quite um, the distance or the direction taken between these two boreholes. It'd be something through here in that sort of direction. So I'm going to measure this distance here and relate it to the horizontal scale. So the ends of this line, picked out by the arrowheads, is an elevation change from 95 to 45 metres, so that's 50 metres. So the vertical distance here is going to be 50 metres. And now we just measure that distance there using this scale to get the distance over which this 50 metre elevation change has occurred. And that works out to be 120 metres, that distance, so we have our a triangle set up with a horizontal distance of 120 metres and an elevation change of 50 metres. So it's going to be 50 over 120 metres and that is 0 0.42 so we just need to look up the inverse tan of 0.42. So alpha is 23 degrees. So that's the dip. So we have our strike of 049, a dip of 23. So I'll write that down, 049, 23. And now we just need to think about which way it's dipping. Well here, at this end, We've got structured contours of 90 meters. Here we've got 50, so this is higher than this. It's dipping this way towards the northwest. And that is our orientation of the top of the aquifer. So we've calculated the dip and strike, its dip direction approximately, and we've calculated the depth in the borehole. Well, I hope you found this demonstration uh, useful. Three-point problems are a fundamental tool in subsurface prediction in earth sciences. You can have a go yourself by downloading the problem map from the ShearZone website. I hope you have fun.